one of my brother-in-law sent me a sent my honey a a text where one of the artists who 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 portrayed in some of the stories of the Messiah, he was speaking in in Aramaic, the Arpaf. At the end of that sequel, a voice comes towards the end, and it's not that gentleman who was who was talking with someone else. And the message was, I'm coming soon. Be ready. This part that I'm gonna show, I'm gonna show the, the, the first part, my thought. Scott is gonna do the last one. Let's see. But on this part of my thought, I'm gonna I'm gonna do a little I'm gonna finish what we started yesterday or last week, the other tribes, remember? There are only three left. I'm gonna do them. And then I'm gonna jump into the partial, but I'm gonna be talking about the book of Jeremiah and the book of Acts. I always say to myself, what is God, what is God doing to us? But the first thing that we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing for God? Hmm. Are we willing to give our whole lives for Him? How many of you know how the, how the Apostle Paul died? He was executed. Yeah, he was executed, yes. The how, I don't remember at this moment. How was, he, how was he executed? And who sent the decree to have him executed? Very interesting that how this man was going to the, to, to the, to the, to the chief priest and getting letters to arrest those who were proclaiming Yeshua. No, not yet. So uh, that's what I'm going to share with you. Also about Jeremiah. Jeremiah received his commission when he was in his mother's womb. He was already predestinated. Well, he was being informed, God had already commissioned him to be the voice. Some, I have heard so many teachings about Jeremiah that I, I say to myself, why was he called the, the weeping prophet? And one of, and, and, and one of the or one of the commentators said he was crying was because he never married. He fell in love with this beautiful girl, and the Lord said, You can't marry her. Really? That was the reason? Right? That's why Peter's doing this. Not gonna get married. <laughs> so you know, um, also Jeremiah, uh, he's he's a he, he's the man who wrote the Book of Lamentations, and all this is. It is something that, that you all need to understand that through it all, you know, I said a statement last week about extraordinary men and women, right? That they are that they arise to the occasion. But we're going to be talking about two extraordinary men. Jeremiah and Brother Phil, the Apostle Paul. We're also going to be talking about Phineas. How Phineas kills Bilam. This is this Parsha. You go to fight the, the battle of Midian. And Moses is angry with, 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 the, with, the, with, 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 the, with the captains. Now, when you go to war, there's always going to be casualties, right? So how many men went to war from Israel to fight the Midians? There were five kings, five armies. Anybody? 
before we start? Okay. Start. Everybody's got your piece of paper and notes. There's some pens here. We need some pens to write. Amino Malkino, my brother, my king, we thank you for this glorious day. Give us the opportunity to come before your church, to, be, to come before your presence, and give you all the honor and the glory for your mercy and joy forever. I would like to thank those uh, studying with us via Zoom. May Hashem illuminate your countenance. May the Ruach. Open your eyes and your spiritual ears to be sensitive to the voice of the Ruach. And that the word that we teach today will lead us to all truth. <coughs> Father, I also lift up to you before your throne of grace. Your daughter, our sister, Irma, and she's in the hospital. From the surgery that she endured this, this past Wednesday, oh God. We pray of our Father God that I pray, Lord God, that you be with her in that room. You just permeate her from the crown of her head to the soles of her feet. And that your presence engulf that room, O oh God. Whatever problem she's enduring right now, Lord, may you heal her completely. Remove the pain, the swelling from her, O oh God. And Lord, I pray for her husband, Mark, that you be with him as well. Illuminate him with your confidence in me. It can be a beacon of God. Hope and encouragement to his wife. Father, we will continue to lift him up in prayer to be with him in this time of need. Father, as we come before your throne of grace, bless us with your presence, prepare our hearts to receive your word, open our spiritual eyes and our spiritual ears that we be sensitive to your voice. And that we be guided to all truth. Father, in everything you tell me to, to give you praise and accolade, and I say, Baruch Ata Adonai, Elohim Melech HaOlam, Asher Kitishanu Bermitzvota Vitzivanu, Da Asot Tevidei Torah. Amen and Amen. Okay, let's finish where we left off yesterday on the tribe. We left three more tribes, I believe. So we are, um, I'm sorry? Benjamin was the last one, so we're now with the tribe of Dan. Okay, and that is uh, chapter 26, verse 42. This, These are the sons of Dan after the families of, of Shuham, the family of the Shumanites, and these are the families of Dan after their families. Dan is tied to Capricorn. Capricorn. These people that are born in this particular sign, they are very materialistic and practical. Materialistic and practical. And their life it's all about order, discipline. And for these individuals, spirituality is very hard for them. Because they rely on the five physical senses. What are those five physical senses that we have? You got it? Did you know? What are they? Smell. Smell. Ear. Taste. Touch. Touch. Taste. Yeah. As it says, touch, 
smell? Sight. Sight. Okay? What is someone? <coughs> I don't have the I don't have the the, the notes with me. Oh wait, 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 wait. I got the notes from last week there in there. It's in there. The months? Yeah, the month. The Hebrew month and the uh, and the big oh, the, the binder? The blue binder? That's the month of Tibet in the Hebrew calendar. And then from December 22nd to January 19th. January 19th. Okay? Uh, the, I'm sorry, the Hebrew month. I'm sorry? The Tibet. Hebrew month. Okay. Yeah. Tibet. The Hebrew month is Tibet. <clears throat> okay. The next one's going to be in Numbers 2644. That's the that's the tribe of Asher. The sons of Asher up to the families of Enoch, the family of the Imanites, of, of Ishiv, the family of the Ishiv, of Berai, the family of the of the Iberites. So Asher is tied to Aquarius. <coughs> The Hebrew month is the month of Shabbat, C-H-E-B-A-T, S means S-H-E-B-A-T, and it's Jan uh, January 20th to February 18th. These, indivi this, these individuals break the limits of any concept. Comma. Belief. Comma. Or tradition. Why? Because they believe that they are no longer valid. God, I know that, Kai. Mm -hmm. They're no and longer world. valid. They're the precursors to the woke, right? Well, it's more than that, Daniel. These individuals, they create their own. Oh, well, yeah, that too. <laughs> they reveal and they create their own ones, new ones. I can see that. You see, however, they need to exercise more order and discipline because otherwise they can generate chaos. So, in a nutshell, I just put, they create their own limits but they have no discipline. In other words, they're rebels. Are we rebels? Isn't the tribe of Dan the one? Okay. I forgot. Dan? Yeah, isn't that the one that betrayed or something? I'm not sure. Yeah, I know where you're going with it. Yeah? Yeah, pretty much. How could, oh yeah, I don't remember, but there was something about it, but I'm not sure. <laughs> what, what was it? Yeah. Is it? Years ago, years ago, years ago, years ago, I taught on the on the coming on on on, on, the, on the second coming of the, of the Messiah. And, 
I believe that this individual is going to come from that tribe. And the, the reason being because it's going to come from, from the north. And the enemy is going to come from the north. I was telling Scotty that isn't it very unique that all these sacrifices are done in the north? Every sacrifice was done in the north. Is there a coincidence? I don't know. Y'all, you already got that because we're going to erase. Rose, that's okay. Ruth? Angie, you got it? Peter, you got it? Yes, sir. Daniel's got it? You got it. Scotty, can we erase? Last one. Numbers 26, verse 48. Pisces. P I S C E S. The Hebrew month is the month of Adar. This is from February 19th to March 20th. Individuals are very sensitive, very emotional. Sometimes the, these individuals become too comfortable in their lives. And that's a danger. They get too comfortable in their lives. And the danger is they will never achieve their goal. Well, you just said something of interest. You said that they get comfortable and they won't achieve their goal. Well, their goal and God's goal isn't necessarily the same thing. That comfort may be God's shalom. So that may be the goal. <coughs> no. I disagree. And here's the reason why this, this is my personal op uh, opinion. You don't have to agree with me at all. Sure. Okay? But this is my draw. Each and every one of us has been given a goal to, per to perform here on earth while we're alive. All of us. Some of us strive with it. Some of us say, well, no, that's not my calling. Uh, or you would say, no, um, that's, not, that's not my cup of tea. I'm going to share this with you, what happened to me. 
we were in the church. One of the, one of the one of the uh, practitioners there, she kept telling me, says, one of these days you're going to become a pastor. And I says, no, I don't want to become a pastor. And, and then and then she said, well, and I've been praying for you, and the Lord said to me that you're going to that you're going to become a pastor. And then I said, sir, very successful. Me. Well, just like God speaks to you, He can speak to me. Exactly right. I agree okay? with that. And. Um, Time went by, and she kept faithful to what God had called her to do, to pray for me. Well, it happened that God had been calling to me for the ministry, but I had been running away from that calling. And the day that I was ordained pastor, she was in the audience. After the service, she came up to me. She says, I have fulfilled my commission, what I was told to do for the Lord. And I thank him that he gave me the ability to be here and witness this. Now I'm ready to go home. Older woman? She was an elderly lady. She was dying with stage 4 cancer. She was the mother of Johnny Fierro. Really? Yes. Her name, Mrs. Betty Gonzalez. So you were tight with this woman and family? No. You weren't tight with her? No, I, I knew him. And, uh, and, the, and the reason why I knew him is because I was teaching that discipleship. And they liked how I, I, I was, uh, that I was teaching and they started to go to the Bible studies that I was doing. I never met Johnny. So the day that he came to bet this right up, we were we really? were outside on the foyer and bring and, and, and yeah. inviting all the people coming in. And him and his wife Terry came in and then after the service I told him I said, Would you like to go have lunch with us? So, so or coffee, whatever it was. And they agreed. So we were talking, he said, Well, how'd you come to Messianic Judaism? I told him, I said, I, I went to the whole spill. And I told him about this, about this individual who had been praying for me that, that, that one day I was going to become a pastor. That's my mom. And, uh, <laughs> and his eyes are wallowing. He says, she's my mom. I would have listened. If I would have been so stubborn, I would have to done what I went through. But this person was faithful to her calling. No matter the circumstances of her health, she persevered. She persevered. She persevered. That's why I just said what I said. All of us have a calling. You might not want to know what your calling is. You maybe you don't want to accept your calling, but you all have a calling. One of the things that you're going to find out in Judaism, as you study the word in Hebrew, Hebrew will open up your eyes to see the things of the Creator. Yeah. I said earlier, 22 Hebrew letters, 22 chromosomes that make the DNA. We are all connected. Study the Hebrew. Fall in love with the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. Your eyes will open. Mm -hmm. That's why Mr. Fierro and I are very close. That's cool story. Well, there's more to the story that no, I, I'm, sure. I'm just taking it short. But I tell you one thing. Is this your son as well? 
I'm sorry? Yeah, I was about to tell you. Is this your sign as well? Yes, that's my sign. Oh, okay. That's mine. My mom's that, too. That is me. I tell, I tell the little one, I'm like, you see, Rabbi, you're the same sign. <laughs> That's me. All right. You all got it so we can erase it? Mm -hmm. See? We can erase it. <clears throat> now we're going to be talking about Matot. <clears throat> can I throw a wrench into the mix? What? What okay. happens on a dart, a, a dart bait? That's my <laughs> Which sign it fills in? From what I understand, a, bar, a dar bait is considered just a, a dar. It's just an extension of a dar. I get that. I'm just trying to see how it would work out. Yeah. I, I was sitting here thinking the same thing. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. So on this partial, it starts off very interesting. Words, right? I want you to put oh, the word right. neder. N e d e r. Years ago, when I brought this teaching, Scotty was bringing there for the very first time, and he said something. I click his hand right there, and then he says, "You just said something that's what I'm going to do right now." N D E R, Nedev. Nedev means a promise. Okay, a promise. Ooh, I got a question since we're on this one. Neder versus uh, Shavua. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't understand the difference. I know there is. Well, we'll, see, we'll, we'll see if we can answer your, your next question. Okay. You make a promise, and we all make promises, right? Mm -hmm. How many of us keep those promises? Here's the danger when, when, when we promise something. Whenever we say something, it's being recorded in heaven. There is a tape recorder. Okay? So, let's say a, 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 good, a good example. What's your weakness? Mine is ice cream. What's yours? Chocolate ice cream. Huh? Chocolate ice cream. Chocolate ice cream. That's what your what your weakness. Anything. Pizza. Scotty, what's your weakness? Sweets. 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 Ruth, what's your what's your weakness? Tortillas and beans. Tortillas and beans. Kepa, what's your weakness? Sugar again. Driving. Driving is your weakness. <laughs> Rosa, what's your weakness? Bread. Bread. The bread. Angie. Elote. Elote is corn. Chewy. Cold. Okay. Let's assume that you say to yourselves, I make a promise that I'm not going to have ice cream for a week. <laughs> or you say, Beth, um, but Beth makes her own promise to take. If, 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 if I say, Lord, I promise you that I'm not going to have an ice cream for a week. Well, let's say that during the week, you all see me eating ice cream. You didn't say which week. <laughs> okay, let's say that the following week, after I make that vow, or, the, or, or, that, or that promise, you all see me eating ice cream. Yeah, for a week, which week? That is a sin. That becomes a sin. Don't make promises. So the, exactly what you just said. It is best not to make promises. But in, in Judaism, there is a way to break that promise. Beth, while he does that, can you put Noon Dalit Resh above it? Above the netter. And what do those letters make? Well, this is what I see out of it. 
To the future of the generation. To the future of the generation? Something like that. The future generation. Okay, to annul the to annul the the, 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 the dead, it is called a kataras, H A T A R A S. Kataras. H A T A R A S. Nedarim, N E D A R I M. E D E R I M. N E D A R I M. Stop. So, in order for that promise to be broken, it needs to go to the to the judges, three judges, and the judges are going to question the person who made that promise to see if that promise can be annulled. And then, if they if they, if they agree that that promise can be annulled, then they then they say this below that N U T A R. Second word, L A C H, comma, repeat it twice. More. Comma, one more time. This means it is allowed to you. And it's repeated three times. Once for each judge? Mm -hmm. Now, if the person does not keep his promise and does not go to the judges and gets that three times, guess what happened to that person? No. The person gets whipped 39 times. How many times was the Messiah uh, beaten with the whip? 39 times? So, be careful with, with your be careful with your promises, huh? Okay. We already got that. Can we erase? Well, before you erase, contrast that with Shavua. I, I just uh, I'm going to get to it. You are going to? I think you just thought I'd ask. Leaving the dead up. No, I don't think below the joint. Got it? Truth? Truth? Another type of, of Nadir. Okay? So, let's put that word in, in Hebrew. Shin, Bet, Vav, Ain, So, for instance, something, some, sometimes if the judges are not sure that someone is telling the truth, they tell the person to them that he must swear that he is saying the truth, and only then they will believe him. He's, they have to make him swear it. The problem is, to whom are you going to swear it? The Messiah said. You can't said, swear by the temple. You can't swear by heaven. You can't. Or the you, earth. Can, you can't. Swear, you cannot swear by the temple. You cannot swear by the heavens. 
or Jerusalem. Or Jerusalem. What did what did Yeshua said? Let your yea be yea, and let your nay be nay. Okay. Very critical. Now, Moses. So was appointed to teach all these laws and to the Bnei Israel. We're going to get enter next week where Moses is living his last days or his last week of, uh, on, 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 on earth. He talks to Bnei Israel for 31 days straight. Extraordinary man. Okay. Any questions so far? Shabbat's wife, Daniel? Swearing. So it is a lesser form of a netter. Netter would be the pr the, the primary proof or oath, or yes. as opposed to shavua being the primary. Yes. Okay, I can live with that. You can live with that? Okay. Yeah, I don't know. I just I don't have a choice at this point. <laughs> I don't have a choice. <laughs> I mean, I know they both exist. I know they both basically mean the same in English, but I never have followed up on it. Okay. Now let's move on. There's there's a war with medium. Here's where it's going to get very complicated. Bear with me. I said earlier, how many men go to war for Israel? And everybody says, huh? Oh, it's in your partial. 1,000 men from every tribe. So the, so the men that went to battle were 12,000 men. 12,000 Hebrews or Israelites or Jews. I don't even want to put it. They go into a battle against five kingdoms. That's what made the army of the Medians. In the midst is Balaam. Balaam went to Median so that he could collect on his bounty. Okay? So that's why he's there. So, when he is there, war breaks up. God says, go make war with the Midianites. So, Question to you, how many of the Jewish army died during the battle? None. 12,000 men go to battle, 12,000 men come. They kill all the men. And this is what they do. They gather all of the gold, all the silver, all the copper, all the brass, all the dishes, all of the utensils, all the animals, all the women, and the children. And they come to Moses and Eliezer, the, the high priest, and Moses loses his composure. Those, Moses is very upset. Why did you not kill the women? They're the primary cause or the root of a cause that Bene Israel sinned at Baal Peor. 24,000 of your, of, your, of your men died because of that sin, and you let these women live? Wow. So he tells the captains, you go and slaughter every woman that have been, that has slept with a man. Only keep the virgin women who have never slept. So that they kill, they slaughter all the women, all the young men, all the boys, they kill them all, except for the virgin women. How many of them were alive? 16,000 women or girls who were virgins. 16,000. God says to, to, to them, well, how about the Moabites? Leave the Moabites alone. Years down the road, I'll deal with them. Yes, sir. Okay? Any questions so far? So now we have the war. In the war, Balaam is struck down by Pinchas. When, when, when Pinchas captures Balaam, Balaam is pleading for his life. He says, if you let me live, I promise I will never, 
again curse Israel. And he says, I can't do that. For your great great grandfather tried to kill my great grandfather. He was a descendant of Laban. So he slays him, he kills him. That's why Timothy went to war because he started he started the process by killing Kosky and and and, uh, and Zimri. And Moses said to him, yes, you go and you finish it. Parallel story, kind of sort of. I was in my twenties and I walked into the county jail, not as a prisoner, as an observer, just the office. Uh, and on the wall for the office people restricted from public view was a, a wall of all the sheriffs for the last hundred years but when you read the names on those walls all those descendants of those sheriffs were all prominent El Pasoans you know, so just to give an idea of that grandfather thing it was just blew me away. Yep. This was 30 years ago that I saw this. So some men gave their lives for the for the, for the protection of us. Huh? Uh, I, know, I wouldn't call it that necessarily. I wouldn't. Well, you always have people that like to uh, ruffle the wares. All right, enough of that. Scotty's going to be teaching here pretty soon, right, Scotty? Sure. All right. First, I go to the book of Jeremiah. Chapter 3, verse 1. Jeremiah 3, verse 1. interesting things about, about Jeremiah. Jeremiah is considered one of the canon major prophets and his name in, the, in this book is named after him. By word count that Jeremiah is actually the longest book in the Bible with even more words than the book of Psalms. It is the lengthiest prophetic work it follows the work of another major prophet, Isaiah, and precedes the short work of Lamentations. The book of Jeremiah is highly autobiographical, and more can be learned from the prophet from his own work than from any historical source. Jeremiah was a Judean, came from the tribe of Judah, from the town of Anthoah which is located about three miles outside of, 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 the, of the capital city of Jerusalem. Now, we don't know when he was born, but, we, but, but he probably died in Egypt after the exile in 586 BC. Now, Jeremiah's prophecy takes place during the reign of, of Judah's last five kings, Josiah, Jehoshiah, Jehoiakim, Jehoiakim, in Zechariah. This is the time leading to the Babylonian invasion in 586 BC when Jerusalem falls. So if you can see these, these prophecies, the second the book of Kings, 2 Kings chapters 21 through 25, and 2 Chronicles chapter 33 to 36. So I'm just going to pick here some of the verses as we go up by Jeremiah. Remember, extraordinary people performing extraordinary things for the Lord. Verses 1, 2, 3. Scotty, would you like to read those three verses for us? The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the Kohanim, were, uh, who were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin. The word of Adonai came to him during the days of King Joash of Judah, son of Ammon, the in the thirteenth year of his reign. It continued during the days of King Joash, of Judah, son of Joash, until the end of the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, 
of Judah, son of Joash, until the exile from Jerusalem in the fifth month. You said first five verses? No, no, the first three verses, just that. So on the first three verses, it, it is, it's customary for the prophetic books of the Bible that the book of Jeremiah begins with a brief biographical introduction to the prophet. Jeremiah, for whom the book is named, was called to be a prophet of the Lord as a teenager in 627 BC and ministered in that capacity for 40 years. He grew up in Antioch, a city about three miles northeast of Jerusalem. Antioch was one of the Levitical cities, but there is no evidence that Jeremiah functioned as a priest. His name means Yahweh loosens, referring to the womb, or Yahweh exalts. That's the name of Jeremiah. Verse 5. Honey, would you read verse 5? Before I formed you in the valley, I knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I did set you apart. I appointed you a prophet to nations. So this verse specifies God's personal involvement in Jeremiah's life. The verb form means to create or to craft. So the word to so the verb form means to create or to craft. Like a potter. God carefully designated and crafted Jeremiah in the belly of his mother. Sanctified him means make holy or set apart. Before Jeremiah came out of the womb, he was chosen to be God's side, but he still needed to be obedient. Ordained here means to give or gave. Jeremiah was destined and set apart by God so that God could give his life away. Verse 9. Verse 9. Ruth, would you like to read that for us, Mika? When the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. Okay, very important here. What happens? Touch. Right? Touch is important to God. He is not distant. God touches Jeremiah in order to put his words on his lips. Verses 11 and 12. Can you want to read those? 11 and 12. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Hear me, Yahoo, what sayest see thou? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Then said the Lord, Now then I unto me, Thou hast seen well, for I will hasten my words. So to confirm or to or to confirm his calling, God reveals two visions to Jeremiah. Did, did you read just eleven? Did you read verse twelve as well? Yes, I do. Okay. So God reveals two visions. The first sign is the almond branch. The almond is the first tree to greet the spring. Something seems dormant, but God is watching, waiting to open. When Jeremiah sees the blossom, he, we, he will anticipate the fulfillment of God's word. Verses 13 through 16. What was that? Uh, Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Then the Lord said unto me, Out of the north, and evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants in the land. For lo, I will call all the families of Gideon to the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set every one his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls thereof round about, and against all the cities of Yehuda. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incense unto other gods and worship the works of their own hands. So, this is the second vision. In the second vision, a boiling, seeming pot 
It's a sign that judgment will come from the north, from Babylon. A flash flood will engulf the land and burn everything it touches. And the armies of Babylon will use the all invasion route of the Assyrians to invade Judah. Although this vision is tied to Israel's political future, God's judgment is deeply theological. Judah commits the gravest of sins by burning sacrifices to other gods and bowing down to them. Atrocity after atrocity, right? Would you like to read verse 2 and 3 of chapter 2? Verses 1, 2, and 3. Mm -hmm. Lord, you shall pray in the hearing of Yerushalayim, saying, Thus said Adonai, I remember you, the loving committed, commitment of your youth, the love of your brighthood, when you went after me in the wilderness, in a land that was not sown. Israel was set apart to Adonai, the first fruits of his increase, all who ate of it became guilty. Evil came upon them, declares the Lord. Mm. Jeremiah uses metaphors to remind Israel of their former relationship with God. Literally, the trend that will continue throughout this, this prophetic work. The first is a spousal or marriage from God's perspective. The honeymoon phase was during the wilderness wandering, a time when Israel depended heavily on God. Another, as Jeremiah's metaphor, is harvest. Israel is the first fruit of God's labor. Other fruit will come as, uh, as other nations become God's people, but Israel was the first. Israel is the first fruit. The first Israel it, it depended heavily on God. Jeremiah's metaphor is the harvest. How many of us could could do what Jeremiah did? Possible, huh? Set apart to serve God from the womb. Can you imagine that? Before he was even birthed, he had, he had a calling on his life. You think he wanted it? Have you seen the movie Jeremiah? No, that's the movie, how he wrestled with it. I'm not saying that it's true, but it shows like, like, in the movie it shows his struggle. Like, he's hearing, he's hearing words from God, but he doesn't know what to do with it. He's afraid of those words. And in the, in the movie, he, he is a Levitical priest serving, and he is serving the king when God gives him a word to the king. King becomes infuriated with it. Of course, this is all the movie. But the point is, it's just his wrestling with it. He kept running from it, running from it. Uh, who am I? Who am I? Yeah. I tell you one thing, I learned my lesson. Now, when I hear his voice, I just say, strengthen me. Cleanse me and send me. Let's go to the book of Acts. Chapter 9. During my studies and during the time I've been in the fellowship and the ministry, 
I have heard this teaching numerous times from different men of God and it really intrigued me that how powerful God can manifest himself in the blink of an eye and we didn't, we didn't catch what he's saying. Chapter 9. Acts chapter 9. Verse 1. Chui, go ahead and read that. Now Paul, still breathing, the converter of his disciples to the Lord, went to the high priest. Went to the high priest. Okay. What do you think? Is he a good guy? Is he a good guy, Angie? You see, Paul or Saul had been previously in being involved with the stoning of Stephen. Go to Acts chapter 7, Scott, and read for us verse. Let me see. <coughs> I want you to start reading for us verse 50, starting verse 54. But the key words, we'll read all the way, well, read from 54 to, to 60, so we can get it all. When they heard these things, they became enraged and began gnashing their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Ruach HaKadosh, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Yeshua standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Look, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears, and crying out with a loud voice, they rushed at him with one impulse, driving him out of the city. They began stoning him, and the witnesses laid down their cloaks at the feet of a young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he was calling out, Lord Yeshua, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. After he said this, he died. <coughs> so Stephen, uh, so Saul was there, huh? Supervising. Actually, the the tradition is is the one that holds the coats coats is the one that empowers the stoners. So the way it reads in English, it's like he's just standing there and they give him his coats and he's watching their coats. No. no. He's the one that empowered them to be able to stone him, so he's responsible. He's the authority that gave them the right to stone him. But he interesting. Stephen is the one who sees the heavens open, right? How come the other ones didn't see it? Because of the rage. Right? Go back to chapter 9. Verse 4. Just verse 4. Who would like to read? Any volunteers? Okay, Angie, go ahead. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Shall we, shall we, why do you persecute me? Okay. Do I continue? Okay, that's it. Read it again. Okay. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Shaul, Shaul, why do you persecute me? <coughs> what is the Lord saying here to Saul? Was, was, was the Messiah... Okay, let, 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 me, let me put it this way. Yeshua doesn't accuse Saul of persecuting the body. Of the believers. Mm -hmm. It is Yeshua himself who is being persecuted. Saul will later Saul will later come to understand the close interrelationship between Yeshua and his followers and will incorporate the concept in his epistles. 
So let's keep on reading. Verse uh, 5, 6, it's Kappa. You haven't read. 5, 6, and 7. <laughs> 5, 6, and 7. And he said, Who are you, Master? And the Master said, I am Yeshua, whom you persecute. It is hard for you to peek against the cross. But trembling and being astonished, he said, Master, what do you wish me to do? And the master said to him, Arise and go into the city, and you shall be told what you have to do. <clears throat> and the man journeyed with him, stood speechless, hearing indeed, indeed the voice, but seeing no one. What? They're hearing a voice, an audible voice, but they see no one. Right? But I, it, when, I, when I was reading, it was verse 5. Well, uh, yeah, verse 5. And he said, Who art thou, Lord or Master? And, 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 and then the Lord said, or the Master, I am Yeshua, whom thou persecutest. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said to him, Arise and go into the city, and, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. But the key word that really struck me is says, the men who journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. That's frightening. Right? That would have caught my attention. Pastor Scott, what do you think? Would it caught your attention? I would hope so. <laughs> In a heartbeat, huh? Mm -hmm. So let's keep let's continue reading. Uh, we left off in verse seven. Yeah. So you got a Bible in this? Did you that shot? Okay. Then we got the, we got the chapter. Acts, no? Nah. Okay, then you don't read that. Starting in verse 8. <laughs> verse 8. Verse 8 to my place. That's on page 1211. Um, so I got up to the ground with the open hand eyes to see him. They let him by the hand and brought him into the earth. So he, 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 he rises from the earth or from the ground. And he sees nobody. Right? Mm -hmm. Continue reading, Beth. For three days he could not see and he did not see. Boy, caught his attention, right? Went on a forced fast. Okay, continue, Beth. Now there was a disciple named Anasius. 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 The Lord said to him, Ananias, he said, here I am. Inani, here I am, right? In Hebrew? Okay. So, here's where it gets very interesting. Continue reading, Beth. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the Read up the way to the end of verse 14. Saints. 
California. Okay, so here's what's here's in a nutshell what is happening. So, so Rav Shaul, as, as, as Pastor Scott said, he went into an immediate fast. They didn't eat, they didn't drink, nothing for three days. What was he doing though in, during those three days? Praying. Praying. Right? Asking for clemency? Probably? Sure. So, yeah, right. There is a certain disciple in Damascus whose name is Ananias. And the Lord speaks to him in a vision. And then Ananias replies, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord says to him, Arise and go straight, or go into a street that which is called straight. Okay? Why straight? Well, it's got your, your, your... That's always been interesting to me. A street named Straight. Why not a street named Yarbrough? <laughs> Why Straight? Go ahead, Scotty. What's your... It's, it's always been interesting to me because, one, um, I think it's suggesting that he wasn't on a straight path when he entered into the path of Straight. Too. Well, it's a Hebrew word there for Straight. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 don't didn't, know. I, didn't, I, I didn't study that in, in, in Hebrew. But the, the thing is, is like the, the followers of Yeshua were known as the way. Oh, so Derek. Yeah. That's what they were called, Derek. I, I could see it being, being Derek. Okay. So I, I think there's just an interesting play there. There's a, that is a word play right there on that particular word. Yeah. And we need to, I need to really dig into it. Maybe I can get it for, for next week. Bring me that one word straight. What does it mean in Hebrew? Well, it would be Derek, Derek. I would imagine it would be a, du a duplicate use well, of the word. But Derek would mean way. Well, way, street, path. Take your pick. No, I don't think so. Well, it's okay. I do. Okay. <laughs> so he says, Go into a street which is called straight and inquire in the house of Judas for one who... For one who is called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Okay? So, Yeshua is calling Saul to an exciting new ministry. But first he calls a believer named Ananias to a short-term assignment. Ananias has full knowledge of Saul's original mission to persecute believers. So, it is no small matter for him to approach Saul and to treat him as a believing brother. Okay, Daniel, verse 15 and 16. Of nine? Yes, sir. But the Lord said unto them, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the boy and the uh, Melech and the uh, Bene Israel. For I will show him how many great things he must suffer for my name's sake. So he is, go thy way, for he is chosen, a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Goim, or the Gentiles, and the Melech, the kings, and Bene Israel. Hmm, interesting. So he's talking, he's well, talking to both of them, bear my name before the Gentiles, and kings and the, all three. Okay? He's talking to everybody. So, over the course of Saul's life, how many times was he beaten? A bunch. Because of his faith? A bunch. I think it's four times. A bunch? Four? Three? Five. Five? Any other guesses? More than one is already. More too than many. one is more than the it's too many. Too many? More he was beaten eight times. Eight. Why the number eight? You got draw, draw number eight on the board. Show him your, your artistic yeah. For sin? Yeah. That's interesting. Why eight? It's a head. That's a head for sin, right? But it's more than that. To me, 
How about the Abao Lam? No beginning and no end. Habao Lam. Okay? So, he is beaten eight times for his faith. Once he was pelted with rocks and left for dead. On various occasions, he spent time in prison. Tradition says that eventually Saul was beheaded in Rome by the order of Caesar. You say to yourself, why is this important? Well, it is important to us. I'm going to end with this. This really happened. We were ministering in a, in a ministry in our pastor called Alive Ministries years ago. Alive Ministries is no longer here in El Paso. There was a skit that only few people knew what was going to happen. The pastor is on the podium teaching the word and people dressed in police uniforms burst into the door nice. they arrest him handcuffed him and a third or a quarter of a more of the, of the congregation pew, they left the building We witnessed this after all the people had left those that stayed we, we, we were in shock we were in the skin we knew what was going to happen I was one of the, the men who knew that was going to happen and we were watching the reaction of the people when they uncuffed him and he began teaching he said this is the body nowadays it's pregnant we come to play church. We come to fill a pew or a sit on a chair. But our minds are some other place other than worshiping God. You heard the Russian variation there? No. So the Russian army comes into the church and basically says, uh, all those of you who believe in Yeshua need to stay. Or, I forget what it is, but the ones that left were executed and then the soldiers came back in and says you're the guys I want to talk to because you guys are real believers could that happen today? same numbers same rough numbers about three fourths of them could that happen to us today 2080 rule yeah as to everything I had a I don't know if God was preparing me for something usually he speaks to me in dreams I was uh, I was in this dream, and I was with the Rabbi Quinn. We were at Beth, at, at Beth Israel. They came in, and some authorities came down, and they took down Rabbi from the from the beach. And they said, "Who's going to be the next one to to to, to take this place?" But the same thing that's going to happen to to this man is going to happen to you. I got up and I took a place and I went down with the men. At the end, some of the leadership did not go up there. Think what I'm just saying to you all. We are going to be persecuted for believing what we believe. Everybody knows who we are. Everybody knows where we are. They know what we do. And they know what we believe in. Yeah. They don't like what we have to say. How many of you, when you open your eyes in the morning, what's the first thing you say? What, 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 what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Uh, here we go again. Here we go again. 
That's what that's what Daniel says in the prison. Here we go again. What is it? Moda'ani. No, it should be. I mean, that's Okay, <laughs> what does that mean, Moda'ani? What does it mean? Thank you for restoring my soul back into my body. You know that it says that when you sleep, that 60% of dying, of death, when you sleep, that 60% of death, that's why in the evening you're supposed to pray because it might take you in your sleep and you'll never wake up in the morning. Interesting, huh? Then he says, here we go again. Another day. The same routine. Strive, strive, strive. Fight, fight, fight. Doggy, doggy, got world. Nothing is given to us. We don't deserve nothing. It's all God. No, he gives us a lot. Oh, he gives he us a gives lot. He gives us a lot. He really Every does. day he gives Every us something. Every day we get something. For us to say that that's All right. I'm going to end with this. Last, last thing I'm going to say, I'm going to end with this. Remember this phrase. Every day there is a new victory. You can say Jesus, or you can say God, whatever you want. Again, every day there is a new victory in Jesus. When we learn to put our trust We learn to put our trust in him. He will help you. He will deliver you. You are extraordinary. You are extraordinary. Don't let nobody tell you that you're nothing. That you're a nobody. You are something. You're a child of God. Created in his image. And the weapon that is formed against you will ever prosper. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And no weapon that is going against you will ever, ever touch you or hurt you. Remember this phrase, and this is the first scripture there of was in wrapping to my spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not into thy own understanding. Learn to trust in him. He will save you. Any questions about this part? Okay, ten minutes, and Scotty will start teaching at eight o'clock. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you.